Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today's episode is on the law of success. We've covered several amazing chapters from Raymond Hollowell's book, Working with the Law, including Working the Law, The Law of Compensation, The Law of Receiving. This book really goes deeply into the different universal laws, and this particular chapter is about success. This is dedicated to success with prosperity and wealth and all the happiness that you deserve. It is what we are talking about. Our ability to influence the reality around us and have success with it. For we need to be successful if we wish to fulfill the goals that we have for ourselves. And there is a law of success. Raymond Hollowell explains God intended every individual to succeed. It is God's purpose that man should become great. It is God's will that man should not only use but enjoy every good in the universe. The law of God denies man nothing. Man is born to be rich. The powers inherent in him are inexhaustible. Each normal person is endowed with a complete set of faculties which if properly developed and scientifically applied will ensure success ever growing success man is made for progress every man contains within himself the capacity for endless development advancement into all things is the law's great purpose by learning to work with the law in promoting that aim man may build himself into greater and greater success. All the processes of nature are successful. Nature knows no failures. She never plans anything but success. She aims at results in every form and manner. To succeed in the best and fullest sense, the term we must, with nature as our model, copy her methods. In her principles and laws we shall discover all the secrets of success. Infinite resources are at man's disposal. There are no limits to his possibilities. He focuses and individualizes the elements, forces, and principles of the whole world. He can develop a wonderful intelligence. Thus, all life's questions may be answered, all nature's secrets discovered, and all human problems solved. Nothing is impossible. Higher faculties, remarkable talents, superior insight, and greater power are dormant in all and by special psychological methods. These exceptional elements can be developed to an extraordinary degree by actual and practical use. Every mind can develop greatness. It is simply a matter of knowing how true self-help, self-discovery, self-knowledge, and the proper instruction in applying one's faculties and using one's forces will advance any person. Practice will ensure efficiency. Use will bring forth results. Success, therefore, is within the reach of every aspiring man. Do you wish to succeed? You can. You possess all the essentials within yourself. All you need is to gain a right understanding of the principles and laws upon which success is based and then to apply the right methods of operating these causes until success is earned. The law of success is as definite as the laws of any science. The exact use of this law will produce results every time. It is results that count. And as results may be multiplied indefinitely by a persistent application of this law, there is no ending to the success you can enjoy. Great things are no less possible than small things, and it is the great things that will follow whoever uses the law with faith and understanding. Whatever your present state or condition may be, there is a better and larger future in store for you, but you must prepare yourself for it. You cannot rise into the better and greater things unless you do something about it. Study planning, and effort are all necessary. The young and the old alike are entitled to advance, to be true to yourself and to the law which governs you. 
You simply must advance, for advancement is success. It is the law's intention that you shall move forward. You can stand still and you can go backward, thus retarding your normal progress for a while, perhaps as long as a lifetime. But in the end, you will be compelled to move forward, especially in the direction of soul's growth. Nature brooks no interferences with her purposes. This is often the reason why prods and pricks of adversity come when you fail to move forward. There is a new element abroad, the spirit of progress, and we must all keep pace with the times. You can achieve your ambition, aim high, and build well. What you imagine to yourself as success can be reached. The law never blunders. What she idealizes, she has power to actualize. What she images in your mind, she has the power to produce materially. She ever seeks to build you up in your power and in success. That is her plan for you. The faculties possessed by all great and successful men are the same human faculties that you possess. They gained some understanding of the right kind, and they applied their faculties in the best way they knew for advancement, and so earned success. Some will ask, but in what does true success consist? Almost every other person will hold a different view as to what constitutes real success. To avoid confusion of ideas, let us define our meaning of the term. Most people consider success as being a high state of worldly prosperity. Others, as the realization of personal hopes or fulfillment of heart's desires. Still others, as the achievement of their ambitions or the performance of great deeds. Real success, however, is something more than this. We do not define it in terms of money, position, fame, or wealth, although it may include all these. True, genuine success of the largest kind lies in the results obtained, harvest, reaped, and distributed so that our fellow beings at large are benefited and the world enriched. Yet for the purpose of our lesson, the term success will be interpreted in a more individual sense as meaning personal advancement and increase and the favorable termination of anything attempted. Man is so constructed that he may utilize the elements of his power to build himself up into an ever-increasing power, betterment and success. He is also subtly related to everything outside of himself that this purpose may be fulfilled. Such fulfillment, however, will depend on the actual use he makes of his mind and whether he chooses to serve in ignorance or to govern with knowledge the forces in his life. Success is bringing oneself and one's actions to a standard higher than the ordinary human standard. Most all the failures and defeats in life are due to mental blindness. When the heart is right, the head thinks right. All our acts are judged by our inner motives, not by the outer accomplishments. Out of the heart are the issues of life. Moral cowardice, indecision at critical moments, a desire to have one's own way, inability to cooperate, have shattered the hopes of millions. They have wrecked their prospects of success. To eliminate these mental handicaps is the first move for all who wish to aim high. Success depends upon adopting a true course, upholding what is just and right in thought and action. Adherence to a principle is most essential. Success is not a creature of circumstance, nor a game of chance, nor luck, for not until the golden rule is the basis of commercial activity can we be in harmony with the principle. Religion and business are not two separate sciences, they are both as one. Lord Leverhulme said, it is frequently stated that modern business cannot be conducted on the line of the Sermon on the Mount. I can only say that a business conducted on any other basis will never be permanently successful. Business is an expression of man's highest aim, man's religion. The fact that a man is honest and truthful and industrious does not ensure his success. More may be necessary than this, for if a man is timid, backward, or fearful, Fear will act as a brake to retard his progress. If a man is an efficient engineer, 
It has an inferiority complex. That complex will make him mediocre and he will not be able to extend himself according to his skillful training. Fear is largely the cause of failures. It cannot be eliminated either by drugs or by the surgeon's knife. The only remedy known for fear is understanding. When one understands that the universe is filled with the presence of God, there is nothing to fear. Most of us could meet our obligations if it were not for fear of some kind, but tells us differently. We hypnotize ourselves into a belief which incapacitates our power. Fear clouds our vision. It benumbs our faculties. It paralyzes our mental forces, which must be free and active if we are to avert calamity. When man's mind is confused by fear, he is in no condition to accept an opportunity. God does not give us the spirit of fear, but of courage and a sound mind. Man's religion does not make for him a success. If a man wears glasses to improve his vision, for the same reason, man gets more out of life with a religion that serves to enlarge his vision. A true religion serves to expand or to enlarge man's vision, whereas the practical irreligious man is cramped by his narrow and limited view. If we think supply depends upon people or material conditions, and then are worried when people fail us, conditions go from bad to worse. The only safeguard is to feel and know that God, the law, is our supply, and to affirm it constantly. If we desire success, we must think success, we must talk and act success, and we can do this more easily if we know that God, the law, is on our side. No good thing will God, the law, withhold from them that walk uprightly. The religious-minded man realizes that he that is for us is greater than that which is against us. It is said that half our failures are a result of our pulling up on our horses and checking them as they are about to leap the barrier. Expert riders let the horse have his head, and this ensures a safe jump. Half of our failures, then, are that we pull in at the moment when we should let all our forces out to have full vent as we make a leap. We jerk ourselves back into failure just when we could be riding on to victory. Two boys dove into the river one day, challenging one another to swim across a distance of about two miles. They swam on with a strong and steady stroke, and the lead swimmer, not looking back, continued swimming on toward the other shore. When he walked out on the bank of the river and had completed his swim, he looked back to note that his friend was nowhere near. He looked more carefully, and behold, there he stood, back on the other shore from where they had started. When he met his friend, he said to him, How was it that you did not follow me across the stream and reach the other shore? The boy who turned back said, Oh, after I got about halfway out, I looked back and saw how far I had come, and I was afraid I couldn't make it, so I turned back. But, said the boy who swam across the stream, Why didn't you think to look forward as I did? For I saw only the shore coming closer and closer to me with each stroke. Why didn't you think it was just as hard to turn back to safety as it was to continue swimming to your goal? When Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt to the Promised Land, they met with what seemed to be an impossible barrier, the Red Sea. Some wanted to turn back. Many murmured and complained because they had ventured so far from Egypt. Moses cried out, God, what shall I do? And the word came back to him, Why criest thou unto me? Speak to thy children, that they go forward. Moses spoke to his people, and as they marched into the sea, the waters parted, and they crossed over onto dry land. Moses burned his bridges behind him as he went. Then there could be no retreat. Success is a matter of advancement by grade. No man can become a success except by training. An athlete will train for weeks and months to fit himself for a contest that may last for only a few minutes. The real secret consists in moving forward, and that peculiar mental attitude which promotes this constant progress is the ruling factor in the art of success. No person can succeed who is not imbued with the desire to advance. In fact, the first step is to become thoroughly saturated with the spirit of progress, so one feels stimulated with a 
persistent desire to work for better and greater things. The desire to advance implies the power to advance. That is the law, as absolute in its actions as any law of science. The fact that you desire to succeed is evidence that you have the power to succeed. Otherwise, you would not have been urged to aspire successward. You cannot aspire to succeed unless you have the power to succeed. Desire creates the power. Power inspires the mind of the individual and success is the result of that inspiration rightly applied. Investigating the lives of successful men, we find a very striking fact. We find a common quality that is responsible for their success, which consists of a constructive state of mind. Psychologists term this constructive state of mind as a successful attitude. Simple as it may seem, in most every case the difference which decides success or failure is the ruling mental attitude. It is at fault and is the cause of failure. The discovery of this remarkable fact by modern psychology probes to the very root of some deep practicable problems and indicates a way out of adversity and failure. In short, the positive mental attitude of the man who thinks he can, in contrast with the negative attitude of another who thinks he can't, is practically the only difference between the one who succeeds and the one who fails. The former learns the truth and discovers he can do things and the idea liberates his sleeping energies, stirs them into activity, thrills him with the desire to advance, inspires him to get things done, so he moves into success. Some persons, however, live in the conviction that as they are, so they must remain. They believe that God had cast them into a fixed mold and that the little ability or power which they possess is all they can hope or wish for in this life. Scientific research into the mysteries of the human mind reveals a wonderful world of power and possibility. The psychological truth is that what is possible to one mind is possible to another, and vastly more than we have ever dreamed. The same human faculties and cultivated powers of the great and the successful are possible in all minds. The only real difference is in the degree of development, not kind. Begin now to take a superior view of yourself, your life and circumstances, and of things and persons in general. And as you mentally perceive the better and greater, you will consciously and unconsciously reach out for the better and the greater. In other words, your thoughts, desires, words, and mental actions will gradually become filled with the spirit of progress, and your faculties will grow stronger and your powers will increase. Catch the spirit of the words, I can and you have the key to the successful attitude. No, you can succeed and proceed to think, live, and act in that strong conviction. You may search everywhere, anywhere, to discover the mystic secret of success, only to find that in the end, it is all contained in these two little words, I can. Modern psychology has discovered that the person who thinks he can will speedily develop the power that can. This is a demonstrable law of the mind. Persistently think you can do what you want to do, and it will not be long before you find yourself actually doing that thing. There's no miracle about it. The law works that way. The principle involved is that if the I can attitude is adopted, the mind will proceed to direct all energies into those faculties which are employed in doing that which it is desired to accomplish and steadily build them up until they become large enough and strong enough actually to perform what previously appeared to be impossible. When Napoleon sought to conquer Italy, he was faced with an apparent insurmountable obstacle, the towering Alps. They were considered by the people who lived around them to be absolutely unscalable, but the words I can't were not in Napoleon's mind. He, being determined to conquer, persistently said to himself, I can. His descent on the other side of the mountains so surprised the people in that country that they were practically conquered without opposition. The shock of his doing what was deemed impossible took away their power of opposition. Thus his greatest obstacle proved his sure means to victory. So it is with all difficulties. Obstacles viewed from a higher point of view are invariably stepping stones to success. 
John Bunyan was thrown into prison, and while imprisoned there he faced a problem equal to the Alps. He wanted to continue with his religious work. He was not easily defeated, so on the twisted paper that was brought to him as a cork in the milk jug, he wrote his immortal Pilgrim's Progress. This book alone has reached more people than he could ever have preached to in a whole lifetime. Obstacles serve as an opportunity to call up our latent powers. They draw us out and make us strong. They lead us to the goal we have in view. When we are up against it, when you desire to progress, declare to yourself these words, I can. Remember those simple words contain the magic formula to all success and no goal worthwhile has ever been won without the realization of them. One state in life is largely determined by one's mental attitude. Men radiate discouragement, gloom, and failure because they accept the I can't attitude. Others positively emanate success through a cheerful, confident, energetic I can attitude. We meet them everywhere. One gravitates to conditions of adversity, ill luck, and misfortune. The other attracts the very best and rises on and on to success. The negative weak one, the I can't individual, repels us. We instinctively shun him. That is the law warning us to avoid him because he is out of tune with the divine order of things. On the other hand, the strong type of I can individual attracts and draws us to him. He is optimistic and we are glad to associate with and to do business with him. Everyone has his own individual atmosphere, the same as a flower has its aroma. So let us seek to build up a strong, positive, I can attitude, which will lead us to success. In all circumstances, you are greater than the things or the conditions, if not actually, you are potentially. Whatever you aim at, be certain of winning. Aim high, aim well, and your mistakes will come few and far between. Keep the I can attitude, affirm it constantly. You will succeed. You are bound to win. John D. Rockefeller states, the man who starts out with the idea of getting rich won't succeed. He must have a larger ambition. There is no mystery to business success. If he does each day's task successfully, stays faithfully within natural operations of commercial law and keeps his head clear, he will come out all right. The next step is to encompass your life or to state your ideal or your objective. Make a mental picture and hold in mind that which you are aspiring to achieve. Begin with a persistent effort to work towards the final goal. Life, after all, is just like a series of many steps. Each step may provide you with new problems, but as you meet each new problem, keep your eye ever fixed upon the top, your objective, your aim, your goal. No matter how crude or how poor your first efforts may be, they are but the beginning. You may not compare yourself with another. Everyone has had to commence at some time at the very bottom. In the meantime, know that you cannot fail until you give up. You never can fail if you never give up. Keep on trying. Each effort produces some result. Success, after all, is only the collection of many good results. Never leave till tomorrow that which you can do today, said Benjamin Franklin. The worst enemy you will encounter on life's highway is within your own self. Its name is procrastination. Procrastination kills ambition. It gets one into the habit of indecision which causes failure. Practice making your decisions clearly and promptly. Take care of the little questions that come to you, and they will automatically take care of any other big questions should they arise. One who cannot decide for himself clearly subordinates his judgment. He becomes receptive to the racial thought around him, and then he becomes one of the masses and can attract only what the masses supply. What do you do with your spare time? How do you spend it? Where do you spend it? Do you give it any value? In these days, much profit and sometimes the whole success depends upon 
the using of the odds and ends, the so-called byproducts. Byproducts are something apart from the main article manufactured, and yet they have a value of their very own. All types of big business have their byproducts, odds and ends that pay them well. The Armour Meat Packing Company uses all their byproducts to advantage, from the pigtails to the hair. There are endless byproducts. The pigtails are dried and sold as a delicacy. The hair is made into brushes and strong rope. Now, if armors neglected to use the byproducts, there would be a great difference in the amount of dividends they pay their stockholders. The point for us is this. We may not be manufacturers like the Armour Meat Packing Company. We are dealers in time. Our success depends upon the use of our time and its many byproducts, which we call odd moments. What about those odd moments? The real success of some started in the odd moments. What one does with his spare time not only is clear profit, but it increases his mental activities. Every minute you save by making it useful and profitable adds to your life and the possibility of successful one. Every minute lost is a neglected byproduct. Once it is gone, it can never be returned. Think of the quarter hour before breakfast, the half hour after, and 20 minutes on the trolley, the time wasted awaiting appointments during the day, and the scores of chances each day when you might read or figure or concentrate or work for your goal. Use all your time constructively. It is only the aimless, worthless, unsuccessful ones who speak of killing time. The one who is killing time is destroying his opportunities, while the man who is succeeding is making his time live and making it useful. I always like to hear a person say that there isn't enough time in the day for him. That person is getting the most out of his life, and I venture to say he is succeeding. Success, then summarized, is the way we learn to use two valuable things, our time and thought. Knowledge alone is not success. It is the way we use that knowledge. It is important always to remember that back of all our toil and struggle, under the dust and smoke of things, there are the arms of the Father guiding, guarding, and supporting us. Whatever you lack, He has. Whatever you need, He can supply. Whatever obstacle you encounter, God within you and about you can overcome it. So near to man, wrote Emerson, when duty whispers low, thou must, the youth replies, I can. You can. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win, but think you can't, it's almost a cinch, you won't. If you think you'll lose, you're lost. For out in the world we find success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man, but soon or late, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. This concludes Select It. And this concludes the law of success. This is very powerful, motivational, and inspirational. And the key idea is that you are meant to be successful. It is the intention of the universe for you to be successful. And all you have to do is just believe that you can. Don't waste your time. Don't kill your time. Every moment is precious. And the question to yourself is, am I moving forward? The story that he gives of the person who swam halfway and looked back and then swam back when they could have kept on going to the other shore. 
and they were more worried about how far they had come than how far they had to go. You must move forward, just as Moses did. You must move forward. That is how you can reach that end goal. All things are possible to you, and all success is part of this law. You are meant to be successful. Your heart's desire is yours. Whatever it is that you want, the law will bring it to you, as long as you believe that you can and you take action towards it. For that is the law of success. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. You'd make my day if you checked out my art website. You can find it at www.newearth.art. And welcome to The Reality Revolution. Thank you.